This dude is such a big ugly loser locked in his room gaming all day. Till his sister one day finds his man of culture stuff and blackmails him to play a video game she knows. He can't believe he's actually doing this. This game is so bad cause it's totally a girl's game. Where women rule and gain noble titles. But the most annoying thing is the protagonist is small. But all the noble boys came simping for her. And the anti-protagonist is actually the thick one. But she loses to this small b even if she's cute. This doesn't make sense at all. But he finishes it anyway to get back his cultural stuff. And goes to grab a meal saying to himself. I would rather cut my meat instead of simping for the wrong cheeks. But he falls down the stairs and dies. I had my money on a truck. But Stair Kun decided to step in and do the job. Then he wakes up on the grass and realizes he got Isekai. He says it's okay. He's just gonna get overpowered, beat some evil asses, and get some checks, like a typical Isekai. While he was trying to make sense of things, his parents come to scold him for just sitting on the grass when they are having visitors from the main house. Even though his dad is a baron, he only got this title cause he's married to another woman who seems to be the lord of the house, who disrespects him in front of everyone. While talking to his new siblings to gather information about this world to know where is the demon lord and if there is a hero or not, and the most important thing ever, how to clap some noble cheeks. But he realizes it, the worst thing ever. He got reincarnated to the game he was playing, the girl's game he hates the most. There is no demon lord, there is no hero, and since he's not the protagonist, he got no checks. The flow of time goes on and it's 10 years later, and the main character now better understands the situation he's in, and he intends to use his past memory of the game to get through it. His current family wasn't mentioned in the game so they must have been NPC characters, that is characters that didn't really hold significance in the main story of the game. He decides to document everything he knows so he can be careful not to be dragged into the wrong side of the plot. He comes to accept his mob character role, and decided to play it out that way, at least that's what he thought. Typically, in this anime, the men go to the academy, and it's there that they have more chances for their future. An arranged marriage? No way! But his stepmother who has all the authority as the family head, decides to use him for political gains in an arranged marriage. Won't have been so bad but the person he's supposed to marry is three times his age and has had seven husbands, all of which has died in battle. The main character is very dissatisfied about this and voices his opinion, but he is told that he has no choice since they've managed to put the first two sons in the academy and have no need to put the third one there, especially because it is very expensive. So his options are either to accept this or be drafted to war. He pulls everything in his brain cell and finally realizes that he knows everything about the plot of the world he's in. If he just uses it in his favor, he can get out of his current predicament. He decides to acquire something that was originally meant for the game's original protagonist, which he feels bad about but promises to make it up to her. While he's on his journey, he farms some kills which might be useful for him later and look for the treasure. Although not exactly looking since he still has his memory, so he goes to the exact spot for him to find it. While heading for the glow in the water, he's sucked up by the air current around what looks like a tornado which destroys the ship and sends him flying up. He wakes up in a strange place but it seems like he's still on track to the location of the treasure. While passing through, he recollects items and objects which were also in the game when he played it. When he got to a room, he finds a robot that doesn't go down as easily as the other ones to electric bullets. He tries to trick the robot to think he works in the facility, but of course, the robot won't fall for such lies. So he tries to attack it instead. Little did he know the robot is OP and has a sense of humor. It seems there are two types of humans, the ones that can use magic and the ones that can't. And the robot was built by the ones that can't, to eliminate the humans who could. Perhaps the autumn world might not be a new world, but his world in the future but I digress. While the robot was squeezing the life out of our main character, he pulled a 1000 IQ move and uses a detachable sword to take down the robot. He then goes and scans his hand on the control center to take full ownership. The robot scans him and finds out that while being a new human, he also possesses old human traits which the robot finds interest, and he gives the robot the same name he had in the game which is Luxia. Our main character seems to be fatally damaged from his battle with the robot, and he goes off rambling to the robot about how the world is from an autumn game, and he even remembers his little sister in his past life as he collapses. His stepmother seems to be happy at the thought of the possibility that the main character, I'll be calling him Leon from now on, is dead. She even mentions that it has been six months so he's either dead or he ran away from his family. But she is quickly put in her place as our boy Leon shows up with not just a flying ship but the robot and a lot of riches. And now he's probably more financially stable than the stepmother herself. 
The sweet look of disappointment from the stepmother and the look of satisfaction from Leon. And he can now afford to go to the academy with his own funds. Here all the major players in the plot of the autumn game would appear making the peaceful life he dreams of to be that much more difficult. Our boy Leon seems satisfied after amassing all that money and seeing the look of dissatisfaction on the stepmother's face. And since he's now a baronet, he's now enjoying his peaceful life on the uninhabited island he found on his way. He and his robot companion Luxion now discuss how and what they're going to do to develop the floating island. Unknowing to him, he wasn't actually a baronet but was given the rank of a baron, probably because he cleared a dungeon by himself and found an uninhabited island. So now he has to marry someone in a much higher rank than he is like his stepmom. Our main character is suffering from too much success. Now he has to go to school to find a wife. I have to say, I'm somewhat envious. As he walks through the school, he sees some of the important cast in the game. The pretty boy prince and his mobs like what you'll expect from an autumn game. The rich antagonist. And her mob. While still parading about the school premise, Leon witnesses an event similar to how it was in the game but with a different cast. Instead of the protagonist who slaps the prince, it was someone else, uttering the same line the protagonist made in the game, and realizes something is wrong. His robot companion returns after exploring the town and says nothing is interesting about it but he would like to collect more data, which Leon just makes fun of him, calling him a tsundere. Tsundere? Are you coming on to me? I am afraid that I cannot reciprocate the intricacies of a human relationship, and therefore cannot accommodate your request. He was even rejected by a robot. He discusses with his fellow boys about finding a nice girl in the same social status as them which is very difficult. And it doesn't help them that the pretty boy prince is even attending in the same year with them since all the girls fawn over him, the prince I meet, and his companion. An event similar to how it was in the game happens, where the antagonist, Angelica wonders if the prince, her betrothed is going to invite her to his tea party, but the prince wasn't happy about her coming too strongly. He instead talks to the previous unknown girl, and tells her she's invited to his tea party. Angelica is not happy about this but the prince refutes her saying that though they are betrothed, he's still the prince. The issue with this event is, like the previous one, this one is missing the main protagonist and is instead happening with an unknown character to Leon. Leon is stuck in a tea party class where they are supposed to learn the proper etiquette in conducting a tea party for the girls, which he finds extremely boring at first, and was even called to the front by his teacher. But he was reborn for reasons unknown and sees the light in the etiquette of a tea party. Even Luxion makes fun of him for how quick he is to switch up. He invited a barren girl who invited her friends to just come to eat, complain, and leave for the next one. He must have been trained well with all the self-control he displayed there. While still getting over that incident, he finally meets the original protagonist of the game Olivia, being bullied and crying. And contrary to what he has been saying about staying away from the main plot of the game, he decides to extend an arm to the damsel in distress and invite her to the tea party. Unlike the three snotty nobles who just eat and complain, she was very polite and appreciative which was contrary to how Leon thought she was in the game. She's just a bright ray of light. The main character decided to help her with her predicament by introducing her to his sister. And like every sibling I know, both of them bicker upon seeing each other before getting to the matter at hand. The sister advises her to get close to the most popular person in her class which is most likely Angelica, by bribing one of her followers with expensive snacks to get into the circle. The original protagonist Olivia doesn't come from any wealthy family and only even got to attend the school due to a scholarship so money isn't something she has a lot of. But luckily for her, our boy Leon seems to be a chad and decided to cover the expenses. Of course, most of the money he has should have probably been for the original protagonist. She finally gets to meet Angelica. And at first, she seemed like an antagonist through and through but when she dismissed her mob and discussed it with the original protagonist, she doesn't seem like a bad person and is probably a decent character. In the exploration class, it seems like most of the nobles plan to use both Leon and Olivia as cannon fodder or meat shields. Since Leon has already cleared a dungeon before, and Olivia is a scholarship student, with no riches and background, they plan to take all the credit after. Once again the classic trope but without the right cast, Angelica condemns this new cast Marie, and the prince and his mob berate her for this, and this time, Marie is surrounded by the pretty guys. Honestly, looking at it from the antagonist's side for a change, it's kinda sad. Angelica should just move on from the prince instead. Both Leon and Olivia are clearing the dungeon themselves and like a true gamer who was Isekade into another world, he has no trouble with the monsters, although he got a scratch from a surprise attack from a monkey. And as shameless as you'd expect pretty guys to be, the prince and his mob came, after most of the monsters have been taken care of to take the credit. All of them give a one-liner speech about protecting Maria, and then each attacks a single ant monster. 
Our boy Leon took care of a ton of them without help. A bunch of noobs acting all high and mighty. The prince even gets a scratch but Marie is shown healing him with magic and asked the prince to keep it a secret. Concerned for the prince, Angelica rushed to find out if the prince is okay but he snobs her in front of everyone and leads Marie out with him, which left everyone questioning if Angelica is truly the prince's fiancé. While the tension was still all over the room, Olivia notices Leon's injury and she also uses healing magic to clear his wounds, which she says is the main reason she even got accepted into the academy, and she's happy she's at least of use to Leon. While Leon is thankful, what interests him the most is the character Marie, who seems to be messing with the entire storyline, clinging to the prince instead of Olivia, and Olivia is stuck with him as a background character. Marie's things were burnt by some group of girls, but Angelica was accused of ordering them, and the jerk pretty prince didn't even bother to listen to Angelica's side before telling her to stay away from him and his company. I find the prince to be more annoying than even the Marie character. Meanwhile, Leon and his bros were discussing how none of them are ever gonna get laid, I mean get a girl to marry them. They end up with a discussion about the current situation between the prince and Angelica which Leon notes that the event is not supposed to happen this quickly. He tries to find out more about Marie from Olivia, but then she suspects that maybe Leon likes her like the other guys. And of course, there is no way our Chad main character is like the other guys and falls for Marie. Olivia and Leon hear a sound coming from the other side of the room and of course, the no good Marie is not just busy with the prince but even Brad, one of the prince's companions. It has become clear that she knows exactly what she's doing and seems to be setting things up and controlling the brainless pretty prince and his companions at the palm of her hand. Even mentioning the fact that it's an autumn game, which could mean she's also a reincarnate like Leon. I just feel bad for Angelica because the brainless prince who is easily manipulated doesn't deserve her. Leon's sister barges into his room to find out if he knows about Marie, Angelica, and the not-so-smart prince. Leon tells her about the bullying and the incidents surrounding the prince and Angelica. His sister mentions that Angelica's followers most likely act alone, and she also warns him to stay away from Angelica who seems to be on a ticking time bomb and he should just be on good terms with the easily manipulated prince if he wants to have a smooth life. While complaining about his school life and lack of a wife, he bickers a bit with his sooner robot Luxion before asking him to investigate both Marie and Angelica. At the party, Marie acts all innocent to the dumb prince as usual, and Angelica just stares at a girl flirting with her fiancé. Meanwhile, Leon and his boys make a pact to finally find a good girl that they can marry, but just like me, they get no bitches. How dare you! You're so shallow I can't even look at you! You've clearly never even seen yourself in a mirror! <laughs> what a joke! Come see us when you've been reincarnated as different men! The worst she can say is no right. While still lying in their disappointment, Olivia rushes over to let Leon know that something is going on. Angelica tells the not-so-bright prince that Marie has been getting it with the other guy, and she's not as innocent as he thinks. But as expected from someone who just has a pretty face, he and his company don't see any problem with this and they all confess that they've all fallen for her with the prince claiming he has fallen the hardest for her. He also publicly calls off his engagement with Angelica leaving the crowd to gossip and make fun of her. Angelica deserves better. This enraged Angelica, and she throws her gloves to Marie to challenge her to a duel. Maybe we'll get to see some face slapping and hair pulling. But of course, they were talking about Mecca's battle. The prince with questionable IQ and his colleague all decide to volunteer to battle in her place instead. I think I finally understand how girls feel when they see a harem show. Because the opponent would be the prince, nobody would normally choose to go against him, which left poor Angelica all alone. Leon mentions that Angelica is in the worst type of situation because even if she finds someone and they lose the duel, which would most likely happen since the opponent is the dumb prince, then all that's left for her is a life of misery. Although she's supposed to be the antagonist, she hasn't done anything to warrant that type of treatment. I actually hope someone would punch this so-called prince in the face. Even our Chad Leon agrees. Leon, contrary to what he's been saying about not wanting to stick out, decides to help her out and take on the dumb prince and his friends 5v1. He also decides to act because thanks to Luxia, he realizes that Marie is just like him, a character not originally from the world i.e. she was also reincarnated. The conditions that Marie set for the duel were that Angelica should stop preventing her from getting it with the prince, which Leon expected since she just repeated the same line from the game. And Angelica's condition was for Marie to leave the prince if she wins, and the battle would take place in an arena. They first talk bad about Leon, but our Chad main character knows how to handle a verbal battle as well, and puts all of them in their place. 
He would fight all five of them in a 1v1 which is five rounds. This whole thing obviously isn't part of the storyline that Marie probably knew about from the game and it upsets her a bit but she's still convinced the prince and the others would win. And like the classic school trope, our Chad Leon is bullied for going against the most popular person which is the dumb pretty face prince. What's surprising is the fact that his friends are even part of the bullying. But instead of Leon being angry with his so-called friends, he understands that they are just trying to climb the social ladder and he has no hard feelings. The students even place bets on who they think would win but of course, our main character Leon is the underdog and almost no one is betting he would win so he makes the conscious decision to bet a part of his fortune on himself. Angelica comes to advise Leon that it might be smarter for him to forfeit the duel since she has nothing she can offer him in return because her family has reprimanded her and she'll most likely be placed on house arrest. But Chad Leon rejects this saying that he didn't just do it for her, but because he wanted to punch those good-for-nothing pretty faces after his bad luck streak with the ladies. And he's 100% certain that he'll win regardless. The fact that Angelica even came to Leon to advise him not to die for her sake makes her one of the most decent characters in the show regardless of whether the game painted her as the antagonist. Luxon makes a cool suit for Leon which he disapproved of, and Olivia came to cheer him on in hopes he wins. At the arena, all the cheers were going to the prince and company and all the boo were going to Leon. At first, Angelica is worried that he doesn't have any suit of armor, but Leon tells her not to worry, and Luxon delivers his armor in style. The other students make fun of him for having a quote-unquote outdated mecha, but they have no clue that in this story, Leon is the main character, not the dumb prince. Even Angelica is concerned about whether Leon would be able to put up a fight against them with a lost item. It is said that lost items were made by the old civilization and can't really be replicated by modern-day technology, but it doesn't usually mean that it's better. But Olivia still cheers for him. The prince's friend Brad, yeah, the same Brad that was having a good time with Marie in the library, is Leon's first opponent. And like what you'd expect from someone who always hangs around the prince, loves to talk and brag about his strength, which Leon makes fun of saying he's just revealing all his secrets. As Leon is about to engage, you'd think that Leon would equip a sword or a gun or something, but no, bro he brought a shovel. Reminds me of a certain character. The fight, if we can even call it that, didn't even last five seconds before he was down. Our Chad Leon doesn't just talk the talk but he can also back it up it seems. This shocks everyone completely speechless, and the only one who applauds is his master. Yes, the tea master. His next opponent is Greg, another one of the dumb prince's colleagues. And although this fight doesn't end as quickly as Brad's, it was still completely one-sided. Our Chad didn't just give him a one-sided beating. He even lectures Greg about everything he's doing wrong as double standards. Greg goes off to show the most humiliating display while still saying the only reason Leon won was because of his armor. But this is the same guy that agreed to fight five versus one after they bullied Angelica. Chris the next opponent, like the others before him, talks big but has nothing to show for it as it's not even a warm up for Leon. Even Lockshins feels bad for Chris after that. Jilk, the last remaining of the prince's colleagues who hasn't gotten wooed, is concerned about the prince's reputation if this goes on so he decides to plot something. Leon's sister, Jenna, was not happy about Leon damaging the family name by messing with the prince and his colleagues so she was easily coerced by Jilk to do something to Leon's armor. So she lies to Angelica and Olivia who were guarding it that Leon was in trouble and needed their help. Luxions tells Leon about the sister planting explosives on the armor, but this doesn't even come as a shock to Leon knowing the kind of person his sister was. Honestly, the sister is probably even worse than Marie for knowingly keeping her family in life-threatening danger just to be on the prince's good side. The match starts and like the others, Jilk starts off with an arrogant attitude but then shows a pathetic display for someone with all that talk. When he realizes that his weapons aren't doing anything, he decides to detonate the bomb to kill Leon. But of course, the bomb does nothing to the armor. When Jilk saw that none of his plans are working, he decides to threaten Leon and his entire family. Leon tells him that he wonders how the public would feel about the threat but Jilk tries to deny it, not knowing that Luxon can record audio, and Leon plays it back to him. He then calls Leon's action cowardly, which is rich coming from someone who just threatened another person's family, and even tried to rig his armor with explosives to kill him. 
Leon then delivers the finishing blow and ends the match. See, instead of the sister being happy that the plan she was coerced to fails, she is instead angry which makes her more annoying to me than Marie. Marie herself is shocked that the other characters are weak, and she has no idea where this new character who's stronger than them came from. The dumb prince tries to reassure her that he's going to win since he has the best, state-of-the-art technology armor. This doesn't boost her confidence, because the other four idiots said the same thing, but since he's a prince, maybe this time, he'll be able to pose a challenge for Leon. Before the battle begins, Leon asked the prince if he knew about Olivia, but he says he has only heard about her and they've not had much of a conversation. It just shows how much the storyline has changed because, in the game, the prince meets Olivia as soon as school starts. This just shows how much influence Marie has had in the plot. This time Leon decides to attack first but unlike the others, the prince's armor parries. Most likely because his armor was very well built. Leon continues to berate him both physically and verbally, even saying it's strange that the prince is willing to share the girl he loves with his friends but this does nothing to the prince. Leon also tells him that his love for Marie is all well and good but why is he ignoring Angelica's feelings because she also loves him, but then he says she's only interested in his crown. Leon warns him that if he continues to do that to Angelica, he could be stripped from his title, but the dumb prince goes off saying that he doesn't care and would rather die. This enraged Leon because, of course, it's only the privilege that can say such. Someone who had to struggle for everything he had just to survive and rise won't utter words like that. The prince here is full of contradictions. He says that Leon can just kill him knowing full well that he can't because he's as good as dead if he kills the crown prince. For someone saying he doesn't care about his status, he seemed to be enjoying the benefits. Despite saying all this and playing the role of the villain for the sake of the prince and the kingdom, this doesn't change the prince's mind. This whole ordeal made Angelica cry because she finally realized how stupid the prince is. I mean she finally realized that the prince is serious about his love for Marie. Olivia also tries to talk some sense into him but it's like you're talking to a brick wall. The prince's mind was made up and nothing was going to change this. Leon realizes this, after figuring out the right way to win without killing the prince, showing that he has been trying his best to hold back. He decides to utterly defeat him, destroying every piece of his armor in one fell swoop. Angelica thanks him for his assistance with the battle and heads off, while Olivia asked him why he was playing the role of the antagonist. Our Chad Leon, he's not the hero they want, but he's the hero they need. He also tells her that after everything he has done, he's sure he would be kicked out of the school. Angelica is shown trying to comfort the prince, but his mind is still as stubborn as ever, making her realize that he was dead serious about what he said in the battle. The conversation ends with them calling off the engagement. Just have to feel sad for the poor Angelica whose whole life was made to be the perfect wife for the prince only for him to change his mind so suddenly. Knowing full well about the dangers of going against the royal family, he decides to smooth things by meeting Angelica's dad and making a very generous donation to him while pleading for his life and family to be spared. He also made a couple of suggestions like dropping his knighthood and barony also. This was a bit confusing to them because, from their point of view, he had nothing to gain and everything to lose. So why go through all that trouble? But he blatantly lied out of his ass saying it was for the kingdom. This probably seemed very virtuous to Angelica's dad, because he accepts and tells him to take Angelica to the countryside, most likely due to the events surrounding her and the prince. While walking, he starts feeling sad about the school that he'll be leaving and started reminiscing. At the airship, Angelica is feeling sad about everything, not just about her but the fact that Leon was cut in the crossfire, and she didn't even properly thank him before going to meet the prince. But Olivia consoles her saying Leon knew exactly what he was doing and had planned for it to be like this so she shouldn't take full responsibility. Here we see people who are meant to be rivals or enemies in the original story, being close enough to console each other, thanks to Marie's interference. Luxian asked Leon why he doesn't go over there to console them but Leon says that words alone won't do it, so it's best to just leave them. He's just like me, running away from awkward situations. At home, his parents and maid were preparing for their arrival when the stepmother came in like the boss she is, slapped a few people, and bossed some more. She knew Leon was coming and was ready to berate him, but when Angelica, who is of a higher nobility status than her, walked in and told her the good thing Leon did for her, feeling awkward, she left. I have to say, this is the second time she's put in her place and I'm loving every moment of it. Leon takes the two of them sightseeing around his personal island which they called quote-unquote paradise, and then the hot spring scene, the famous trope in anime where all we get to see are clouds. Even if it could be seen, it would be edited out in the post. Both Angelica and Olivia seem to be getting along over the fact that they have a lot in common, and by a lot, I mean neither of them is our Chad Leon's lovers. 
and they became close. A little sus if you ask me but I digress. Olivia suggests that they should call her Liv if they're okay with it, and Angelica says her friends and family call her Angie so if they want, they can call her that too. Angelica admits that she's still bitter about the whole situation with Marie and the prince and wants to have revenge. Leon says he can help her with revenge which concerned Olivia, but then Leon told her that the best revenge is for her to be happy and forget the prince. Any other revenge is a waste of energy. Our chat has struck again, which makes Olivia happy. Very sus. So now, at first you might think that Marie won, but that's far from it since the dumb prince and his not so smart friends lost all their nobility and wealth. So she just has five broke guys. And they pat themselves on the back with cringe lines like don't worry, even if you can't come close to her, we'll take care of her for you. All of Marie's plans of rich life surrounded by rich pretty boys were destroyed. Someone seemingly important was at Leon's house to tell him about his fate. He says that Leon and his household won't bear any cross for the incident that happened with the prince, which Leon was happy about at first. But then the real shocking news was delivered. And congratulations, Lord Leon! Ah! Nobody said I would get a freaking promotion! Our main character is suffering from success and was given a royal title directly from the king and queen, which means he doesn't have to leave the school anymore. Luxion gives Leon a status update about Marie and the prince. Since they've lost their riches and titles, they are now earning money through dungeon clears and also training on the side to defeat Leon. Says they are all enjoying themselves, all except Marie. And now, Leon's true friends, Angie and Liv, who know his real personality and don't mind, drag him to have some fun. You might think that's the end right. Well, that's very wrong because this isn't even half of the series. Meanwhile, as the queen was scolding Leon, all that was going through his head was how he was going to make the most powerful woman in the kingdom to be his wife. We start off with the school festival arc. Leon and his friends used the money he earned after betting on himself against the dumb prince and buy expensive tea sets to host a maid cafe. Livia and Angie are obviously going to be the maid. Lord have mercy. We must stay focused brothers. We must stay focused. Our Chad Leon probably has negative risk because it seems like Livia and Angie are probably closer to being together with each other than either of them is to be with him. Both of them must seem like goddesses to Leon's friends, in comparison to the other girls they've met in the school. Leon's sister barges in with her own troubles. Apparently, she's not only a wicked sister, she's also a bad friend as she decided to intentionally steal her friend's rich boyfriend. And she wants Leon to prevent the guy's actual girlfriend from coming after her. As if Chad Leon is going to waste his time defending the wicked. Livia tries to tell her not to be a bitch I mean not to do so, but Leon's sister was very disrespectful to her and tells her to shut it. This enraged Leon as he tells her off with a warning that if anything happens to her, she would have to deal with Angie. Just a reminder that Angie is supposed to be the antagonist and Livia the protagonist but now in this timeline. Both of them are close friends, if we can call it that. Leon's sister dismisses herself and leaves the room. Not before she adds a few insults to Leon of course. Livia was grateful for Leon taking her side instead of his sisters. Can't believe someone as good and pretty as Livia was ever with the dumb prince and companion in any route. She's truly too good for them. Leon's two friends came to tell him about the current situation. The prince and the not-so-smart companion decided to be petty and host a cafe also next door to them knowing full well he has the publicity. The only thing he and his companion know how to do is play dirty. And it doesn't end there, he charges an outrageous amount just for sweets and teas. Leon and Livia decided to see what was so special about their cafe, and were surprised because instead of calling it a cafe, the correct term would be a bar. Leon after looking at the aesthetic, could tell it was mostly Marie's idea. Marie claims that since the prince and friends were nobles and royalty, people would have to pay at least that much for their services. Marie and the prince decided on their own to turn it into a challenge with Leon in hopes to gain a bit of dignity after Leon told them that they were not in the same league with him in the arena. Chad Leon of course wouldn't back off a challenge, even though he's at a disadvantage. Livia like the nice person she is, tries to advertise the cafe to get more people to come, but all she got was mean words from bullies. While still depressed, an unknown girl talks to her and tells her that she would be happy to come to the cafe. Meanwhile the queen, yeah, the same queen who probably holds the most authority in the kingdom since it's a matriarchy system, seems to be excited in anticipation to meet Leon again at his cafe during the festival. During the festival, Leon and co were pumped to get their cafe in business but Angie was called for an executive duty. Turns out it was because the beautiful queen wanted to use her as an escort. And from the few interactions she had with Angie, it's obvious that she's nothing like her son the dumb prince. Probably got most of his genes from his dad. She even apologizes for the dumb prince's actions to Angie but according to her, 
She planned on scolding Leon too for his actions during the arena. Probably don't blame her. Chad Leon brought a freaking shovel to a sword and gunfight. She says she can't believe Julius, also known as the Dumb Prince, was fooled so easily. Personally I'm not shocked as he hasn't shown any traits of possessing more than just looks since the start of the series. The queen wasn't also happy about the behavior she observed from the students in the school. Looks like most of the girls in the school aren't worth much as they form an incredible queue for the prince's overcharged bar that he called a cafe. While observing, an arrogant girl who seemed to be a high-ranked noble due to the amount of servants she had, ordered them to take her to a table in the most arrogant way possible. At the same time, the queen and Angie were walking through the hallway while the queen was excited to bully Leon by saying stuff like his tea is lukewarm, but she was beaten to the line. The arrogant noble showed early, seemed to have the same idea to bully Leon but obviously not in the same manner as she takes it too far by tossing the tea in Leon's face. Leon's self-control when it comes to tea was very impressive, as our normal Chad Leon would have put her in her place, but he just takes the insults without any resistance. I'm not sure she knows that she's wearing a skirt. As she continues to insult Leon, it becomes obvious that it's a personal vendetta that she has against him, due to the money she and a lot of people lost because of the bet during the battle against the prince. The queen and Angie witnessed all of this, 